Hello, Brad. <laughs> How are you, Dave? <laughs> so you've been fixing my boat after it had a lightning strike. Yep, looks like it. Was that a big job? Yes, was, lots okay. of work to do. I bet there was, so you've done really well. Yep. Show, me, show me around some of the gadgetry. Okay, basically the new i-series instruments. We're running a mirror of our wind instrument there presently. One of our favourites pages. So basically you can scroll through your favourites pages just using the up and down arrows. So you've got your heading with your speed and depth on there as well. Basic depth, boat speed and back again. So you can set up all those pages as needed. This guy here will be doing the same thing as, except he's displaying wind speed as a big figure. AOS targets back to heading and speed, depth, speed. And with you. Yep, basically a uh, new wind instrument as well. Uh, he's, he's much the same operation as your old wind instrument. You can run from, from true to apparent wind with your little, little uh, indicator there showing you which is which. And uh, he's pretty straightforward. We're running across to our autopilot now. Same, same operation as your standard, as you had with your ST60 previously, so just auto. Right, standby. That's all we've got to do there. We can run through. We are currently in auto mode. Steering to a heading. Steering to a heading, and I want to go to win mode. I can do that just by having this here. Now I'm steering to the wind. And if I go back to auto, I go back to auto. And I've chosen wind as my default using this mode shortcut, shortcut key. key select and I can make it track instead so that saves it as track and now you can see down the bottom here that option now says track So now if I press that button, we go to the fact we haven't got a waypoint in. Yep, okay. Quick battery, yep. right, and it gets charged from... So he's, you can see he's running up to the this switch here. Yep. Okay, so what this switch is doing is he's selecting between start battery, which is number one, yep. and auxiliary battery, which is your dive battery. This yep. is this is isolating the gen set. Right. Okay. So if we switch this over to both, which is down below, yep. what's happening is that's joined the start battery and your dive battery together. Yep. Which can then start your gen set. So generally you would leave it in that position and that way you are always the start battery is being charged via the VSR from the house battery, which in turn then through here is charging the dive battery. So you'd suggest we normally leave it like that? Yep. And when would I change it out of that position? Well, mm, never really. You don't you don't need to, to change it out of that position unless you're quite happy with the charge in that auxiliary battery. Yep. Then you could turn that to one, which will then just have the generator starting off battery number one. Yep. And then that will leave that one as a reserve. Yep. So you say you've had it on charge for, for quite a while and you're not planning on using that auxiliary battery you can just flick it over to one yep. and then the generator is starting off battery number one which is the start battery right. and if the start battery ever fails or is flat uh, what you can do is you can run across to two which is your auxiliary battery that little auxiliary battery will be able to start the gen set which will then run the battery charger to bring back up the start battery so I guess if we go diving and disconnect all of this yep. and we come back and we've got a flat dive battery, Yep. if I plug it in there and there's just a risk I might drain the starter, the big starter battery yep. and lose the ability to start the engine. Yep. So, what so it might be better to do is to reconnect this when the engine's running or something like that's that. That's right, or, or, yep. or when, when your house batteries are fully charged, in yes. which case your VSR is on and you've got good state of charge in the house battery, you'll have good state of charge in the start battery yep. and you'll still have charge coming in from your solar 
or if you're running the engines, then that will charge the... What's the VSO? Uh, it's the voltage sensitive relay. So he's joining the start battery and the house battery together yep. once they're over a uh, set voltage. Yep. And then it isolates the start and the house bank when you drop down below a set voltage. So normally that's 12.6 and 13.2. What are those two things there then? Okay, so they're your, your circuit breakers for the solar installation. So one is protecting the panel supply coming into the regulator, and the other one is protecting the battery supply going to the regulator. So if you ever have a problem with the regulator, one or both of those will trip, or if someone shorts out some wiring somewhere, then they'll trip and protect the, the wiring in the regulator. Right, and if they trip, I just press the red button, right? Uh, the red button actually is what turns them off, so the yellow lever will swing down. Right. So to reset, you swing the yellow lever back up to its position there. Okay. List. Okay, so we've got an isolator there for our inverter charger, which is this guy here. Right. Um, followed by the fuse, which is the, uh, the circuit protection for the inverter itself not really anything you should ever have to worry about unless you have a major problem there that's just as a protection thing to stop any uh so that big thing covered with in a yeah, drive yep that's that's, that's a got, big fuse that's got their fuse underneath that cover yep. so pull that cover off so so that's their fuse underneath there right and if it blows if yeah. it blows you've got a major problem with the with the inverter or someone's done something with the batteries when the when they're charging is right. running. So I don't have a spare there. I can. No, we can. I can organise your spare if you like. Okay. In a in a worst case scenario, you can just join the cables together. Yep. If you know for sure that you've eliminated the cause of blowing the fuse. Right. To isolate the inverter from the batteries. Right. Once, once again, if if either you're doing any sort of maintenance on the inverter or any uh, electrical work, you want to be isolating the supply of 240 volt. The inverter, that's the, that's the only thing he's doing. He's, he's not, the inverter supply is not going through any of your other isolator switches down there. For the reason you may want to turn off your house and you can leave your charger running and that way your batteries will be maintained. If you turn off the house isolator, you'll still have charge supply going to the batteries. When leaving the boat, we can leave the house on, the emergency parallel off, and the start battery off. Yep. But we also have the option of turning the house battery off yep. and leaving the in inverter on yes. with 240 going on, yep. as long as the one in the cupboard near the drinks department is st on. still on. Yep. It's best to have this off rather than shore or ship when turning on shore power yes or when starting the engine yes starting the genset or the genset yeah the and the engines or not uh it's irrelevant for the engines irrelevant for the engines yes. but before starting the genset or before starting shore power it's better to have this switch on off as to say neither shore nor ship and then turn it on to what you want afterwards the inverter is supplied by the main, main circuit, circuit breaker. breaker. Yes, and then the output of the inverter goes through the GPO circuit breaker there. And the output goes through the GPO, which is the standard three-pin plugs. Yep, that's right. The uh, Magnuson inverter and shore power unit is now functional, but waiting to get the lithium program. And this is the solar regulator and that's all up and running too happy to handle up to 60 amps yep that's right and we're currently only using about 20. the lithium program yep. for the magna sign tell me about that uh, brad okay basically we've got that just on a sealed program which is quite happy at uh, 14 volts for absorption and 13.7 for flow um, what we're going to miss maybe is the Without having a rebulk value high enough, it's what it's going to do is uh, you will lose amp hours before the charge will go back into bulk mode, which is no problem if you're on the boat and using the boat. It's only if you got it for a long period of time without being able to come onto the boat and 
run it back into a rebulk mode manually. Right. Yep. Okay. So two months leaving the boat in Tansville. That should be fine. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just connected to shore power. Yes. And here's the Mag Magnusine uh, charger inverter. Yes. It's now giving us 13.4 volts. Yes. Zero amps at the moment. Yes. So if we give him a minute, he's he's just checking things and uh, he should ramp up sometime soon. Sleep mode, so those LEDs will go out after a period of time, and also the backlight on the the LCD display will go off. And you can wake it up with pressing that yep. on-off charger. Yep, pretty much any button right. will wake it back. In a, uh, a forced bulk situation, what I've done is I've wound down the equalised voltage. So, in order to get it back into a bulk situation, we can, if we just hold down the charger on-off button. And then it'll go to an equalise mode, which will then run up to 14.4. Once it, uh, once the batteries can hold it there, charge is now gone to pretty much, pretty much maximum output. In which case, then it'll run at that until it reaches its voltage set point. 122 amps. Yep. Okay, and you triggered that by holding down the charger button. Charger button, yes, just hold by that. By holding part. down this charger button. Hold it down for a couple of seconds. Yep. That forces it into action. Yeah, that's it's right. wakey wakey. Yep, and then you'll get the fan going. Right here. Yep. Um, action in here. That's a good indication of how the inverter is working. To life. Right. Okay. And we can also see that down on our battery monitor. Actual our total total amps in. Right, so it's putting out 120 and this one's receiving 107. Okay. Scroll rather than auto scroll, you can change it to auto if you want it to scroll through its different pages um, over a period of time. So to scroll through your pages, you're just using your up and down. So we've got our house battery voltage. Start battery voltage, which is zero because we've got our battery isolator off presently. And then we've got our house amps. And then we're back to our, our preferred home page. Really gives you a good indication of your battery capacity and also you've got your voltage and uh, amps either charge or discharge there as well. So that's showing... Yep, so the big bar scale is showing... We've got 379 out of a possible 400. 400 total, yeah. But this is a better better machine. Yep, much yeah. better. It'll hold, it's it's not going to derate with temperature. It's pretty temperature stable and it'll give you a mm. much better output over time. Good. And the inverter output is sine wave and... Yep, pure sine wave, uh, 2700 watt. So, yep, right. considerably larger than your... Previous Victron one. unit, yep. which I believe was 2000 watt. I think they say 2500, but that says uh, 2500 VA. And this one is how many? Uh, this is 2700 watts. Right. Yep. Okay. Start the gen set. We no longer need to have the starter battery on here uh, as long as the uh, switch. The red isolator. The red isolator. Okay. Yep. That one's got to be so on probably for generally. Leave him on battery one, unless you want to be charging your... So is there any value in switching that off when we're not running motors? Uh, when you're not running the gen set? Only if you want to eliminate the an accidental starting or something like that. But, but am I using any... because that produces a little red light on the throttles. Uh, so no, normally what I've tended to do is just turn things off. Yep, this, this is only providing power to the gen set, not to the start. Okay, so I don't have to have... How should I leave this, do you think? If you were wanting to charge the dive battery, I would leave it on both. Yes. Uh, normal conditions, I would leave it on one. That's only the gen set involved for the yep. start battery. That, that's right. The start battery... So this is the generator supply selector. Yes. So he's, he's either selecting supply from the start battery or... But from the, the one industry. downstairs has to be on to start the... That's supplying Motors. start battery power to the engines. Yes. So two totally different functions. Right, okay. 
So now the gen set is separate to the starter batteries, That's to the, right. to the, that, that the motors, the, the Yan motors. Okay. Yep. I've now started the gen set, and so I'm now going to turn the sh the switch inside to ship instead of shore. And the Magnusine shore power thing has now gone to sleep and stopped its fan. And we'll be getting hopefully some charging amps. At the moment we're at minus 5.1. Uh, yep. We should be able to see that up on our... Is it coming through here, is it? Uh, yep, I'll just I'll sneak around behind you there. Yep, so we're on ship. Okay, what we've done... The main circuit breaker flipped on that occasion. Two possible explanations. One is that the uh, shore power, which was still running, was still going when I switched it over, possibly too quickly from shore to ship. It might have been better if I'd paused in the middle on off. Uh, the other option would have been to go around to here and press the charger button and cycle to uh, standby. So basically we've got the opportunity to wind back the charging if you don't want to run 100% charge, if you want to run the gen set with your hot water and, and maybe run some other appliance at the same time. Basically we can go to setup, we can go to charger setup, we can go up to maximum charge rate. So if we select that by clicking you'll get your little arrow there and we can actually ramp our charging down to say 50%. And then if we go back to meter, we'll stick that back on to equalize once again to get the charging happening. And we should see that come down to 60, 60 amps output once it starts thinking about it and ramps up again. See, okay. Yep, so it's, it's now limiting itself to 50%. Okay. And what the possible advantage of doing that is what? The advantage of doing that is you're not drawing so much AC input, so yes. you can use that available gen set power elsewhere. So if you wanted to run your aircon and you found out you were found that you were overloading the gen set a bit, yep. you can wind back the charging. If the, these the lithium batteries will take as much charge as you can throw at them up until the point where they're fully charged. Okay, let's put that back. So I'm going to yep. uh, go so to setup. Setup. Set yep. Yep. Now scroll with the. Going to. Uh, Yep, scroll that. Yep, so rotate that till you get to charger setup. No, you went too far, go back. Yep, there you are. Yep. Yep, click. Click. Yep. Scroll again. Yep, there you go. Click again. And ramp it up. Uh, yep, then you can just go straight to meter. And that gets you out of that level and then there. So now it's ramping itself up. Right. 120. Inset is running and I've got to turn off charging before I stop it. So I'm going to cycle through here, charge a standby and also in here I'm going to go to off like that. And now you can hear a change in the noise. This is still off here and so now I'm going to press the Gen set to stop. Yep, he's stopping. Go to sleep, baby. There you go. Going up to shore with? No, I go to shore power again. Yes. And over here, we'll probably see not a lot happen to start with. Unless I wake it up with the charger. We'll just have a look in that cupboard and make sure that that main breaker is still on. That hasn't tripped out anything. It has. It has, okay. So why did that happen? The main breaker tripped. So I have to put that back on. And you can tell you, you stay the charger. We've got some load now. Before I turn off shore power, I have to eliminate mode here with the charger button. So I hold that down. 
Yep. No, Charge fine. a standby. Now I can come around here and the fan is still going. I'm just going to want to stop any second. Shall I wait? So now I can turn this to off. It's very quick. Almost the inverter's on. It's in search mode, and it will only really work when it's needed. So it's not essential to turn the inverter off. If there's nothing using AC, the inverter won't use any energy. Just one press. Turn the inverter off. We're not charging. Therefore, we can come around here and turn to shore power. Did you just tighten up that knob? No. <laughs> Let's get the backlight on. So he's got a sleep mode as well where the backlight goes off. Yep. Basically we're running at, uh, presently we're out, solar panels are outputting 35 watts, uh, 2.7 amps, and we've got our voltage there 13.5. Uh, the temperature reading, you've got 22 degrees C, that's your battery temperature in the centre right. at the top there. Yep. MPPT is referring to the maximum power point tracking uh, function of the regulator, yep. which in turn, it, what it's doing is it's it's looking for the highest wattage you can get as a combination of voltage and amps out of the solar panels. Does that mean it works differently in the morning and the midday and the evening? No, he's, he's only going to change from power point tracking from when it's in a bulk absorption mode down